Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about my nail care routine as well as some tips and tricks on how to keep your nails long and maintain that length. Because for me, one of my favorite things about having long nails, I don't know why, but it's just, it seems like a massive compliment when people think my nails are fake. Like they, they're so long and they're shaped well enough that people think that I have on acrylics. So that's kind of, the types of nails I'm looking at. So if you want some tips and tricks on how to keep your nails long and strong, keep watching. So I've broken down my routine into a couple parts. There are some things that I do every single day. There are some things that I do pretty much every week. And then there's just some as needed maintenance. And then at the end, I'll just throw in some tips on how I tend to keep my nails long and safe. So the first thing that I do every single day, multiple times a day, is oil my nails. I have tons of different nail oils to choose from. I keep them by my bed, I keep them by my desk at work, I have some in my car, and I have several next to the couch where I sit when I like work from home or I'm just hanging out watching TV. It's where I'm sitting now. <laughs> um, and I, multiple times a day, I'm putting oil on my nails. Usually, first thing in the morning after a shower, last thing I do before I go to bed, and then multiple times in between, just if I notice that my cuticles are a little bit drier, because the nail oil will not only help to make your cuticles look nicer, so for like, if you wanna take nail photos and stuff like that, but if you put it over your entire nail, it's going to help add some flexibility to your nail. I don't know if you've ever had this happen, but when my nails get really dry, if I like tap them against anything just a little bit, they'll start to snap. And so when you have them oiled up and they are retaining some of that oil, they are more likely to bend rather than snap. And with a bend, you might have like a little bit of internal damage where it might put some strain. You might see some white marks where your nail has bent, but you won't actually break it for the most part. And that's kind of what you want, especially when you have longer nails, it's a lot easier to hit them against stuff and so I like to keep my nails oiled all the time because I don't want to accidentally smack a wall, which I have done several times, and snap all of my nails off. The next thing that I do daily is keep my hands themselves hydrated because for me, I've noticed if I'm only oiling my nails and not really worrying about my hands, I have to oil my nails more because it seems like my hands are just sucking all the moisture away. But when I put on a hand cream, put on a nail oil, and wear those in conjunction, then I don't seem to have to do either as much. So I have a couple different hand creams. I don't really have a holy grail hand cream right now. Whereas with the oils, you know, I do have some that I definitely prefer. Specifically, I really like the Orly Argan Oil Drops. That one's really nice. You know, all the oils though, they work pretty well. But I feel like with a hand cream, you know, everything I have, it works fine, but there's nothing that is like, oh, this is the best hand cream you'll ever use. So if you have any ideas as far as that, let me know down below. But right now I have, uh, I think about three that I'm switching between. I have the, is it Dianus? Yeah, I think it's pronounced Dianus and it's a goat milk hand cream. I bought a sampler and there's just a bunch of little one ounces. And that's what I keep uh, next to the couch. And so I'll keep that there at my job. I have a little tin of this Nivea hand cream and that one is really nice for the office specifically because my office is super dry and my hands, you know, I work with paper and I'm in a dry office. So my hands get extra dry, but that one is like, it's like a thick creamy paste almost. So you get it on your hand and it just creates this kind of a, a thick barrier that lasts a little bit longer. And then in between all that, I have a couple of hemp lotions that I use and you know, they're for your body technically, but your hands are nothing if not part of your body, right? And so I use those as well and they smell nice. They don't, I don't think that they do anything like crazy special, any of them, but they're all doing what they're supposed to do. And the last thing that you should definitely not do daily, but have daily is nail polish on your nails or just something, right? So if you wanna use just a clear polish, even that's fine, it adds at least a little something. And the reason why I say this is 
having polish on your nails adds an extra layer of protection on your nails. I know this all seems so dramatic, right? They're just nails, but it's important to me. And so I want to do everything in my power to protect my nails, especially the longer they get. Because I've noticed when I'm not wearing polish, no matter the length of my nails, they're more prone to chipping, breaking, and peeling, which is a big issue for me and my nails is the peeling. So when you always have something on your nails, you know, I always wear base coat, at least two layers of nail polish and a top coat. That's giving a lot of extra barrier of protection against my nails. So they don't peel barely at all. The only time I notice them peeling is if I've uh, left polish off them for too long or something like that. And they rarely break with nail polish on, or if they do break, like I recently had a small break on my thumb, but it didn't go in as far, like the crack didn't go in as far as it would have typically if I wasn't wearing nail polish. So I was able to file off the residual nail and save the length of my nail. And that's why keeping a lot of not a lot of, but keeping some polish or some sort of barrier on your nails is really important. Okay, so now on to the weekly stuff. The first thing that I really do weekly is cuticle maintenance. I don't think that this necessarily makes your nails grow faster or gives them length, but it definitely gives the illusion of length for sure. When you are cleaning up your cuticles, pushing them back every week, it kind of gives you just that little extra like millimeter of length on your nails and the appearance of them. So what I do is I will first take cuticle nippers and nip only the dead skin around the, two, the left or right of my nail because sometimes I get skin that kind of comes up and I nip that away. Then I take a cuticle solvent and I put it on the outline of my cuticles and I just take an orange wood stick and I push back the cuticle and then I scrape around to pull off any of that dissolved cuticle and then per the instructions I'll like wash my hands and get that uh, get that cuticle solvent off of my fingers. So after I do the cuticle maintenance I move on to nail maintenance and I do this once to twice a week so weekly is a you know it's a rough estimate, but at least once a week, I take a glass nail file. I only use glass because anything else, the grit is just too rough for me and my nails and it shreds them. I take my glass nail file and I file the sides of my nails. I know some people recommend not to, but my edges of my nails, the left and the right, like flat edge of my nail, they can get a little bit scraggly, I guess. And they'll start to catch on like threads and my hair. And so if I don't just take a little bit of time to file that down just so that it's smooth again, then it's going to lead to breaks way later on down the line. So I just do that once or twice a week and then I maintain the shape. Now, depending on the shape of your nails, for me, it's a little bit different how I maintain them. I actually, I have, I guess, kind of like squarish or would you call it a swivel? I don't know. I, I like the flat edge on the tips. And usually the way that I grow out to this is I do a rounded tip until it hits a certain point where I'm confident that the, the squares won't break. And I just then file flat across of those uh, oval or rounded shapes and I get these. And the reason I do that is because for some reason I cannot maintain this shape on shorter nails because the, the corners just always chip right off. I've tried it multiple times. It doesn't work for me. So I start with a, a rounded tip, wait for it to grow out, file it flat, and it takes way longer because you lose a lot of length when you do it like that. But it's the only way I can get my nails to get to this shape. And so maintaining round nails, I you know do the sides like normal and then once at least once a week i have to re-round the tip because i type a lot for my job and it really flattens out the tips of my nails so i have to round them up again when i'm doing the round shape and then with square shape i just flatten them out a little bit because sometimes they weirdly enough they get a little bit rounded from the typing and then i round out the corners so that they're not too sharp and they don't snag on anything okay and then as far as just as needed type of stuff the only thing I really do as needed is I will file, like I'll have an emergency file if I need to. And that's just if, if I have any sort of break, even with polish, 
I, if I'm at home, you know, I stop everything I'm doing, take the polish off that nail so I can assess the damage, and then I file away whatever needs to be filed so that I can save that nail. Now, if I'm out and about, I'm just like carefully like walking around with like my hand like close to me so that it doesn't break anymore because I don't want to lose that before I go home. Sometimes I will if if the break looks small enough, I will file it a little bit with the polish still on if I'm out and then I'll deal with it when I get home the rest of the way. So that's my specific routine. Those are the things that I actively do to keep my nails growing strong, keep them long as they are. But I also have a lot of life tips for your nails. And this whole section is gonna sound insane because I know that I seem insane when I when people see me doing some of this stuff. But listen, as I once heard cork manicures say, nails are jewels, not tools. So I'm not messing around here. So the first tip I have is obviously never use your nails to open a can, like a can of like vegetables, can of soda, can of whatever. I always either ask my boyfriend to do it or I take a spoon when he's not here and you just slide the, the spoon right under the, the tab of the can and you just snap it up and then you can pull it the rest of the way. And my boyfriend has gotten to the point where he doesn't want to deal with me breaking a nail because I'm sure I'm annoying. And so whenever he sees me with a can in my hands, he just takes it and opens it automatically. Another thing I'm super cautious of is running my fingers through my hair. Now, I have like sliced through multiple nails in the past couple of years just because I ran my fingers through my hair. Now this, that was dangerous. I shouldn't have done that. But especially in the shower you know if i'm washing my hair and i start to run my hands through my hair i felt it slice clean through soft wet nails and so i'm super cautious when it comes to doing anything like that i try to keep a hairbrush in my bag at all times so i'm not like sitting here trying to brush my hair with my fingers because i don't want to slice off any of those nails for some reason it's just like it always slices so close to the base it it doesn't feel good and it takes forever for that to grow back out Okay, and then I think I alluded to this earlier, but like never grab for anything nails first. You know, I always go in with like a, like a curved hand and then like wrap my hand around it because there's been so many times where I've like gone to reach for something, just bashed like 90 degree angle, smashed my nails against like a wall or a table or whatever and broken multiple nails right in a row. Like there was a time I remember I like misjudged some depth and I was going to turn on the light and I just smacked the wall instead of hitting the light switch and I just broke four, like all four of my nails and I was so mad. So I have learned to kind of close fisted go and then grab the thing that you're trying to grab. And then just back to the wet nails thing, try to avoid situations in which your nails are going to get soaked. like. Obviously there are some things that are unavoidable, like showering and bathing and, and washing your hands. But if you're gonna do the dishes, you know, wear gloves. Um, don't get into like water balloon fights. I don't know. If you like are into gardening and stuff like that, you can get them damp from the dirt, wear gloves for that. And if they are wet, you know, just use a lot of caution. So when I first get out of the shower, I throw my hair up and then I just kind of do nothing for like 20 minutes because I don't want my nails to get like bent out of shape because they get so wet and the longer they get the more difficult it is to prevent any kind of accidents from happening while they're wet so the longer my nails get the longer I just kind of sit and scroll through TikTok on my phone until my hair is dry. If you've ever been to a nail salon I'm sure they they have like buffed your nails to death but I am somebody who doesn't really believe in buffing your nails uh, I do have I think I do have one buffer and that's for like really severe exceptions where I have a nail that is gonna peel really bad so I just kind of buff it a little bit to kind of like get that top layer off 
so that it doesn't peel back even further. But that's really rare. I try not to buff my nails because what it does is it just like thins them right out. And by thinning your nail, you're weakening your nail. And that can be really dangerous later on, especially if it gets wet, if you hit it against something, you know, if you just let it get too dry and you smack it against something, that thing's gonna break instantly. So I really advise against buffing your nail unless you really have to. So if I do break a nail, depending on how broken it is, kind of dictates what I'm going to do next. Now, if it's my thumb that breaks, I don't really do anything. I file the thumb down and like get it level, get it back to the shape it needs to be. But because you can't really see my thumbs in pictures and stuff like that, I just let those grow back out. And my thumbs break more than anything. I don't know if it's just from the way I use my hands. I'm not really sure. I think it's probably from pulling my pants up and stuff like that. You, I just use my thumbs more than anything. So, so if a thumbnail breaks, I do just cut it off, file it, maintain it, and like grow it back out. But if it's one of like the important ones, I, I first assess like how much did it break? If it broke down, you know, like a third or halfway, I'll flatten that one out and then I'll bring the rest of my nails either almost all the way down to that length or down to that same length and I will just allow them to grow back out together. Sometimes I will just keep the rest of the nails the same length and wait for that fourth nail to kind of grow back out and meet the rest of them. Usually I only do that on my right hand because this is not the hand that I take pictures of for Instagram. I probably wouldn't do it on my left hand just because it would look really weird in the pictures to have one nail just a little bit off. But I don't mind too much on this hand just because on my right hand just because you know most people aren't looking too closely and I don't want to have to regrow four nails when it's easier to just regrow one. There's less less things to worry about. For a broken nail, I've also used like the tea bag hack where you just take a little bit of a tea bag and you glue it on your nail and it kind of acts as like a band-aid or a patch. I found that for me, it doesn't work too well just because I think the C curve on my nail is just a little bit too harsh. And so it just pulls it right apart. Like every single time the, the patch has just ripped in half and I know other people have had really good luck with that hack, but for me, it just hasn't worked. The only time it's really worked for me is I put the tea bag on there and then I used the Zoya Naked Manicure Gel Kit and I put that over the top, but that's a lot to deal with and have to replace every once in a while. So I just file them down if I have to, even though it's really hard to do because it's really sad. <laughs> So yeah, that is my basic nail care routine and just some tips. It might seem really like high maintenance to some people. I know most people don't care this much about their nails. And then to others, it might seem like I'm not doing enough because you care a lot about your nails. So to those people, I ask you, please let me know in the comments, what would you do differently or what would you add to this nail care routine? Because I am always looking for ways to improve and really reimagine what I'm doing because I just want my nails to grow as long as possible and stay strong. So with that said, that's going to be it from me. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Bye.